This week marks 25 years since a South Central Wisconsin priest, Father Alfred Coons, was murdered in the halls of St. Michael's Parish and School. Decades later, the most extensive investigation in Dane County history is still unsolved. NBC 15's Elizabeth Wattis joins us now with how close detectives say they are to cracking the case wide open. While rumors of who killed Father Alfred Coons have been circulating through that tiny village of Dane, current detectives say they have their own theories, hoping one of those storylines helps them uncover the secret inside St. Michael's. a large metropolis. It's a small farming community. Dane, Wisconsin. In 1998, the population hovered above 600. Everybody in Dane knows each other. Overnight, that number unexpectedly dropped by one. I think everybody was pretty shocked with it. I mean, it's not often a priest gets murdered. Longtime Dane resident Ian Padru was in fifth grade when Father Alfred Coons, a conservative Catholic priest, was violently murdered. There was no one to replace him in the Diocese of Madison. His neck slit. The priest bled out inside his parish, St. Michael's. It's been a long time. Padru could have been one of the last people to interact with the priest. He remembers riding his bike outside St. Michael's with friends the day before the murder. We actually got chased off by him, Father Coons, and we were interviewed by the FBI actually at the school. They said, uh, what were you guys doing up there? And, you know, what did he say? Was he mad? Is there any reason you'd want to hurt him? And no, of course, the answer was no. We poured every resource we had into that case. Back then, retired Dane County Sheriff Dave Mahoney was the lead detective on the case, interviewing every resident in the village three times over. But in the tiny town where everybody knows everybody, there's just a lot of rumors. It seemed nobody knew what happened. Those cold cases never really go cold. They get reassigned to a detective or a detective team. This is obviously an extraordinary crime. With a combined 50 years on the force, Dane County Sheriff Detectives Tim Blank and Gwen Rupert have taken over the Coons case. This is the hardest type of case. I called this the whodunit without witnesses. They have scoured all 4,000 reports gathered in the past quarter century. Book one. Starting with the very first one, when a teacher at the school found Coons's body the morning after detectives say he was killed. Mr. Jackson arrived for work and found a deceased subject in the school. They say one of the biggest challenges in this case is not having the technology back then that they do now. DNA wasn't really a thing in 1998. I mean, it was kind of out there, and but we, we didn't swab for DNA like we do now. But blood evidence on scene did cut their suspect list in half early on. The partial DNA is male. Detectives say the man who did it most likely had visible injuries after Coons' death. The 67-year-old priest was a Golden Glove boxer who didn't go down easy. This was a fight and he fought back. In the past 15 years, the detectives say crime-solving tools have evolved, but their Coons Evidence Vault only contains what's called partial DNA of the killer. Which we cannot put into either um, a nationwide database, nor can we do the genealogical searches like other agencies have been able to do. It has to be a full sample, and we don't have that. But that's not stopping them from retesting evidence in the state crime lab. Uh, I wouldn't be comfortable right now saying what we're testing, just that we are testing. Even with holes in the storyline and no suspect named. With what we know right now, there's nobody I would say, yeah, I know he did it. This investigative pair has their own theories. They aren't ruling out. That it was a burglar or someone like that who surprised him. They got into the church or he, for whatever reason, he opened the door to them. But Rupert says it's hard to tell if anything was actually stolen. The other theory has always been that he angered someone within the parish or someone within the community, um, perhaps because they didn't like the way that he was um, paying attention to their wife or significant other. And a motive that's never been made public by law enforcement until now. Has Father Coons ever been a suspect in a clergy sex abuse case or have allegations come come forward in that theory of what happened? We do have allegations in a clergy sexual abuse case. Um, I can't go much further than that at the moment. Um, and that is certainly a possibility as well.
The case has now left generations of detectives searching for answers. Lingering questions when I left office in May of 2021 was this case and would we get it solved and when. Hope is still on the horizon at the scene of that deadly crime in Dane. I'm very optimistic. And I'm optimistic too. And maybe, just maybe, in the little town where everybody knows everybody. Maybe it was somebody he knew too, I always thought. Could be somebody from who knows around town. Someone also knows and is ready to confess the secret inside St. Michael's. For me, it's definitely the why. Um, is it just a simple burglary interrupted or is there more to the story? I want to hear the whole story. Five years ago for the 20th anniversary, the sheriff's office did a social media campaign that brought in about 30 tips. Detectives tell me they ran all of the information down, but it led to dead ends. Anyone with tips can contact the sheriff's office at the number on your screen right now, 608-284-6800. In the studio tonight, Elizabeth Wattis, NBC 15 News.